This program is brought to you by Newsworks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. Call the Eau Claire City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Anderson? Here. Beaton? Here. Benjamin? Berge? Here. Christofferson? Here. Emmanuel? Gregert? Here. Klinkhammer? Here. Lohr? Weld? Here. Worthman? Good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, rainy, drizzly Monday evening, but I uh, appreciate those that of you that have ventured out and, and, and are joining us here this, uh, for this meeting. So I'm going to go through just a few things, probably going to take longer than our meeting itself, but uh, I will go through. Um, again, during its Monday meeting, the Eau Claire City Council conducts public hearings, listening sessions, and public discussion where residents in our community are invited and encouraged to ask questions and weigh in on important decisions we'll be making during our legislative session tomorrow at 4 p.m. in these chambers or in the coming weeks or months ahead. We want to thank Valley uh, Media Works for live streaming this proceeding to those of you not able to join us in person. Also, uh, for those that wish to watch, please visit valleymediaworks.org or visit channel 994 and Spectrum Cable. It is also simulcast at 101.9 FM and you can find past meetings on YouTube under the Chippewa Valley Media Works channel. If you plan to address the council this evening, I will briefly review the protocol. Once an agenda item is introduced, staff will present on that item and following the presentation, council may have questions to clarify the issue. We then will open the item for public input. Once the item is open for comment, please come forward one at a time. When you approach, please begin by announcing your name and address and then begin sharing your comments. We welcome you to speak for five minutes. You will see three lights before you. The first light is green when you, and will eliminate when you begin speaking. It will then turn yellow when you have one minute left. When the light turns red, that indicates you've reached your, you've reached your five minutes, and I will politely ask that you bring your statement to a close. Sometimes council members will ask uh, you follow-up questions, so please give us a moment before stepping away from the podium. If you wish to speak on an item that is not listed on the agenda, you may do so during the public comment period at the end of the meeting. If you haven't done so yet and you're here for that reason, there is a sign-up sheet on the back podium there. Um, lastly, if you're not comfortable speaking at the podium, you can fill out a comment form also on the table at the back of the room. Any of those comments then are distributed to us um, and the other council members uh, ahead of our legislative meeting tomorrow night. As always, you can email or call us uh, outside of this meeting, our contact information can be found on our city website and then also at the, on the table at the back of the room. With that introduction, we'll get on to our first order of business. Uh, there's one item scheduled for a public hearing on tonight's agenda. Item number one is a public hearing on an ordinance amending the zoning code for the city of Eau Claire by amending the general development plan regarding restrictive covenants for Sky Park Industrial Center as shown in planning file Z1648-19. Mr. Allen, good evening. Thank, good evening. Thank you, Council President Weld and members of the council. Uh, thank you for taking the time this evening to uh, hear this item. Try to keep it brief, but also uh, uh, hopefully uh, make it worth your while here this evening to have this discussion. Uh, just trying to zoom in here. This is item number one. This is a map that uh, staff uses with the Plan Commission, who heard this item last week. Uh, the item before you is located uh, southwest part of the city. Uh, this is a request to rezone property to amend the general development plan. Uh, and actually approve an amend, uh, general development plan, then, therefore, uh, the Sky Park Industrial Center. A little more broadly here, uh, the properties in question related to the Sky Park Industrial Center. And specifically, again, this also is in your packet. Uh, this shows the notification area. Those uh, parcels noted in green were provided with uh, direct uh, 
notifications of both the Planning Commission hearing last week as well as this hearing here this evening. And then an aerial photo, I'll leave it here for our discussion this evening. Again, this is a uh, request by the City of Eau Claire to abolish the current Sky Park Protective Covenants, which is the formal term for what is currently in effect, and to replace them with an amended Sky Park Development Plan. Uh, the Sky Park Development Plan simplifies the process to develop in Sky Park, uh, hopefully making it more attractive to new businesses. Uh, but still maintains the original intent to keep development desirable, uniform, and suitable in architectural design and limited to uses specified in the development plan. Uh, hopefully this would also achieve uh, a park-like improvement with moderate density and large landscaped areas. Again, as the majority owner of property in Sky Park by acreage, the City of Eau Claire is authorized to request this amendment. Uh, the requested amendment has been met with a lot of positive uh, input and response uh, in particular with uh, those within currently within Sky Park uh, as well as uh, conversations even with some of the residential uh, neighbors surrounding uh, the park itself. Again uh, procedurally this amendment is processed uh, essentially as any other general development plan through a rezoning ordinance. That's why it's before you this evening uh, as such. Uh, we'll also have uh, before you uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, the addition of a resolution to abolish the current covenant. So there will be two, essentially two votes to go with this process. But again, the one public hearing uh, specifically on the general development plan here this evening. Again, although the restrictive covenants uh, are requested to be abandoned, uh, the new development plan would guide or provide governance in the continued development of the park as reported even in the uh, leader telegram uh, over the weekend. Uh, one note, uh, kind of fun fact to identify is we'd be going from 21 pages of covenants down to five pages. So even just through that, uh, again, just uh, visually can observe that uh, trying to reduce barriers to uh, development within the park uh, Mr. Aaron White, uh, Economic Development Manager, is here this evening as well if there are any other specific questions. And uh, both of us plan to be uh, present as well for discussion further tomorrow afternoon. Uh, just real briefly, just to cover some of the quick, quickly with some of those changes, uh, include such things as expanding architectural design choices, particularly for corner lots. Um, I'll show this real quickly as well. The uh, highlighted Lots are those that are currently available. Again, some of them are actually uh, proceeding with some interest as we speak. And you can see a number of them are situated on corners and the way the current covenants read, um, the architectural design standards are actually more restrictive. Uh, again, not necessarily intentionally, they just have to be more restrictive uh, because of the frontages that are additional to these corner lots. So, uh, also would be aligning signage standards with the city's overall sign code provisions. Uh, you may recall hearing a uh, similar uh, request to modify sign code provisions for uh, the Gateway Industrial Park. So aligning it very similarly with that. And also moving uh, some of the conditional uh, uses to the permitted column, as it were, and those uses would be Again, nothing um, you know, heavy industrial in nature at all. Again, still being this park-like environment. Those would be industrial services, industrial products, sales, and warehouse and distribution. So again, all actually all three of those are currently represented by existing Sky Park tenants. So again, trying to streamline some of the processes uh, and reduce those barriers for development and those interested or potentially interested in the park. So with that, stand for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Allen? Uh, Councilmember Klinkhammer. Thank you. Um, uh, you said that the uh, current other owners uh, within the Sky Park were generally in favor. Have you had any uh, specific objection to it? 
Uh, very good question. Uh, I spoke to quite a few uh, residential property owners, especially those on the south side of Grover Road. And they brought up uh, previous concerns with a current uh, tenant when they did some development. And so their, their concern is more with making sure that uh, you know, landscaping requirements uh, would not be um, diminished and that would not be the case here. So they would not diminish that. Uh, there was one um, homeowner and they live off of Violet on the southeast corner of the park. They did present uh, testimony at the uh, Planning Commission meeting last week. They simply identified uh, you know, light and noise just to uh, continue to implore that uh, city keep track of light and noise pollution uh, in the park. Again, nothing uh, that they currently were observing or um, contending as an issue, but something that uh, they had observed at times over the course of the park's life. None of the business owners within the park, you have not had I don't, any... I, if, I, if I may, uh, Mr. President, bring up uh, Aaron White to sure. respond to that. Again, I should say, uh, Aaron was the primary staff person for helping draft these and has had more immediate conversations with folks there. So I'll switch over to you. Thank you. We reached out to almost 100% of the, the property owners. There were just a very small number that we weren't able to talk to. The vast majority of them were actually ambivalent. They really weren't overly concerned one way or the other. We had two property owners that signed letters of support. That would be um, Park Ridge Distribution and AEC Advanced Engineering Concepts. They both submitted letter, written letters of support for the changeovers to the development plan. Um, even a couple of the, the businesses we spoke to that in the past um, were not overly happy with some of the changes. They really weren't overly concerned this time around, understanding that we're keeping a lot of the primary content in place. We're just simplifying the process. Um, a couple of them did ask if there's a means to recoup the extra cost they had when they built under the old covenants. And I, I told them, unfortunately, no. But if they expand within the park, then they're governed by the new general plan, and it's to their benefit. So that was the extent of our conversations. Thank you, Mr. White. Any other questions for staff? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Christopherson. Thank you, President Mullen. Um, Mr. Allen, I'm, I'm wondering, this is kind of a, an opinion, in these changes, what types of businesses would we expect to see more interest from? I may defer again to Mr. White. I know he's had some conversations, so again, without divulging too much of any kind of detail, um, maybe you just express some of the types of businesses that he's heard from. Yes, we currently are working with two interested parties who would be doing light manufacturing and warehousing, which is consistent with, with what is already in there. Um, we also had an existing tenant who talked about the possibility of expansion, which might could incorporate an additional lot. So um, everything would again be consistent with what's already going in there. Um, the zoning is not actually changing, so the operation will be very similar to what already has been going on. Any other questions? Councilmember Clint Cameron. Just a forward question. Um, the last conversation that I had city and council regarding property within this uh, park involved the necessity to have sprinklers, which, wouldn't, wasn't, which weren't required under uh, state code but were under the covenant, would change in uh, replacing the covenant with this development plan eliminate those kinds of Inconsistencies and, uh, I yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, I believe that yes, that is the case uh, here as well. It would, in terms of any kind of additional construction uh, requirements like that, uh, would have to follow state building code. Uh, really, it's architectural design are really the enhanced features that would be uh, still in place. But yeah, in terms of that kind of thing, would not be mandatory through this. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming out. This is a public hearing, so if there's anyone here that wishes to speak to this agenda item, you're welcome to come forward. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this agenda item? 
Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And there are no public discussions on our agenda as well, so we'll move right in to our public commentary. Um, and I believe we might have a couple of people. So if you can just give me a brief moment, I'll go through the protocol in regards to the public commentary. Um, again, uh, please state your name and, and your Eau Claire address when you come up. Please note that your thoughts or ideas should be regarding the issues or concerns of citywide application. Please do not comment on issues that were on tonight's agenda, agenda as council wants and needs to hear those comments during the noticed hearing or discussion. You will have three minutes to speak and the same light system will be in use. When the light comes on, you have one minute remaining. The yellow light comes on, you have one minute remaining. The comment period will last for 20 minutes unless it is the wish of two thirds of the council to extend it. So we'll start with uh, Levi o a a Ajo. Scared to say it. Ajo. <laughs> Ajo. All right, Levi, if you want to come on up. Good evening. Hi. Oops, sorry. Don't know which one. More. Can't see it. How do you see it? Oh, it's got to be duh. <laughs> All right. I if I can. Okay. Um, my name is Levi Ejo. I live at 3667 Sundet Road. And the reason I'm coming in tonight is um, a matter of land that was recently purchased on Sundet Road, right behind all the houses. The land, as you can see, is zoned half light industrial and half heavy, which is right here light closer to the houses and then the heavy is back farther. <clears throat> um, I'm really not sure why this entire parcel is not zoned light industrial just for the fact that us residents live so close. The land is currently being clear cut and so far directly being behind the first three houses it's clear up to about 20 feet behind the houses. They left some trees but it's very sparse and open and will look even more sparser and more open once the leaves on the remaining trees fall off in the coming months. Which you can, that's the clear cutting of the hole you know, behind three houses. This is a look from my backyard. So you can see how open it's become. And then this is just another picture too that's from a, oops, a different area. So <clears throat> as you can see, I was gonna say, uh, I have spoken with some of the owners, employees who were clear cutting the land and they said the business that is being built there is to manufacture log splitting equipment that will employ four or five people. I was told the operation would be a Monday through Friday operation and be very quiet. I myself find this very hard to believe considering that the land costs $460,000 to purchase. So I highly doubt you're gonna pay that much money for four or five people to run this little quiet operation. If that is really what the intent on the manufacturing is gonna be, I mean, why not just purchase several of the open buildings that are for sale? There's several open commercial lots right on Anderson Road, right next to where he's building. <clears throat> My neighbor did ask the owner this exact question, why do you not buy, you know, in the area? Why, why are you tearing down all these woods and building something here? And he did not respond to the, the question. I know I'm just speculating, but I think it's just the, basically, I think the guy's just coming up with this story of this log splitting thing because he wants to basically pacify the, the residents on Sunday. You know, he's just saying like, you know, it's gonna be this, but it's not actually gonna be that. And um, the, the guy who owns this land also owns several other businesses in the area. One of them is Eclipse Sand Blasting and Power Coating. That operation is right close to our houses too. And it's an all week operation with multiple shifts and it's extremely loud. <clears throat> I know we cannot stop something from being built on this property, but I think due to the close, how close we all live to the, this future development, I think we should have, be allowed to have our voices heard. My main concern is with the noise this new business will generate. It currently is semi-loud in this area due to other businesses such as Plank Enterprise, the US Postal Annex, and we live so close to the train tracks. <clears throat> 
on the Eau Claire City website under Code of Ordinances, Title 18 Zoning, it states that fences, walls, or vegetative screens shall be provided at the edges of commercial and industrial property where needed to protect adjacent property owners or residents from undesirable views like this. <clears throat> What's going to be built there? I mean, I'd, I'd obviously see it. Glare, noise, and other site influences. Then it goes on to state that that particular attention in regard shall be given whenever commercial and industrial property development abuts property zoned for a utilized or for or utilized as residential. So basically, the bottom line is I should never hear or see this business, and I finally I find that highly doubtful because I can see right through the woods right now. <clears throat> So, I mean, I, I really don't know why the guy cut the tree so close, because he, he obviously doesn't know the Eau Claire zoning laws. <laughs> Mr. Hill, I, I think if, um, if it's okay, if, you know, we can at least look into to see if there's been a site plan or if there's been any type of... Yeah, I know there hasn't been yet, because I've been in contact, contact with Scott... Uh, Mr. Allen. Scott Allen, and he... I know it's like in a wait-and-see thing, you know? Yep. And, um... <clears throat> You know, it's just like, uh, I know this land has come under scrutiny before. I understand something can be built there, but I mean, as you can tell from the pictures, it's like, unless this guy's putting up a 30-foot wall, we all have elevated decks, too, mm -hmm. on that road. It's like right there. The playhouse is like two feet away from that picture. So I get it. It's going to be developed, but it should be like a quiet Monday through Friday operation. It shouldn't be all, the, you know, and I, my, I just have, like I said, I just have an inkling that this guy's going to try to pass something through and then put something else in there. And then what are my rights once he puts it in there? I'm not saying he's going to fool the council, but I mean, really, though, I mean, I think he, the previous people that own this land, Muskie Tack, and I did try to fool the city council. I don't know if you remember that from years, about five or six years ago. Sure. Well, you know, I guess all I can say right now is that w we will be in touch with you and certainly keep in touch with us. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we, you know, we're good stewards and we do our job and we'll look out for, for your interest as well. So, okay. I appreciate it. All right. And thank you for the time. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Um, Ms. Anderson. Good evening. My name is Joyce Anderson. I live at 4334 Heartland Drive West in the city of Eau Claire. My husband, Dave, and I, who is back there, are co-chairs of Jonah's Immigration Task Force. And I'm here tonight to thank um, the city and the city staff, and in particular, uh, Chief Jerry Chanovczewski, uh, who has worked with our task force over the past um, few years. Uh, when I called him about, uh, I think it was about three and a half years ago, it was just out of frustration because a lot of the new neighbors I was meeting who, were, who are Latinx uh, were afraid. They were afraid because, um, for a whole bunch of reasons. And on impulse, I called the chief of police and asked him if he knew that there were a whole group of residents who were afraid to call the police. He at once began to work with us to set up meetings um, of collaboration, of listening, of working together to have a safer community. He and Bridget Coit um, have arranged that they in specifically invite Latina to the Summer Junior um, Academy for Police. Um, this late summer, they had their first um, national night out with a local Mexican band. My husband was a roadie and has the t-shirt to prove it. Um, so we are really, really grateful for all of that. Last Yesterday in Altoona, because of the relationship that we've grown with the police here, Altoona reached out to us, the city of Altoona, and offered to have the second summer annual fiesta. The first we had that was started with Bridget Coit and, um, and Chief um, Jerry last year when there were 200 people, about half of the Latinx and half of the neighbors and police uh, gathering. Yesterday there were 500 people um, at the River Prairie Park in Altoona. We're all aware that this is a time when people don't feel safe in our community. It's not safe to drive without a license. It's not uh, safe in our community because of ICE and the fear of that. And it's not safe because the Latinx were targeted in El Paso. But because of the great foundation that our city has 
built, especially with the help of the chief of police and his staff, the co and the collaboration that we now have. We know that we can count on all of us, including our courageous Latino neighborhoods, to show up and to dance together, to laugh together, to eat together, and to show that in this community, diversity is a gift. And we can all move together forward in building a strong, healthy, and safe community in our beautiful valley. So thank you. Thank you. Was there anyone else that wished to speak this evening during the public commentary? I don't see any. With that, we will close uh, this meeting. And without any objection from council, we are adjourned. The Eau Claire City Council meeting will return in a moment. Newsworks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. We now return you to the Eau Claire City Council meeting. I'd like to call the Eau Claire City Council meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Anderson? Here. Beaton? Here. Benjamin? Berge? Here. Christopherson? Here. Emmanuel? Gregert? Here. Clinkhammer? Here. Lohr? Here. Weld? Here. Worthman? All right. Uh, thank you. Good, good, good afternoon and, and welcome to our Tuesday, August 27th legislative session of the Eau Claire City Council. During its legislative session, the council deliberates and takes action on the agenda items before us today. City staff and council members have spent a great deal of time preparing for this meeting. Thank you to the residents that joined us last night for your comments and thoughts during our public hearings and also those that have reached out to us today. Thank you to Valley Media Works for live streaming this proceeding. For those of you not able to join us in person, to watch, please visit valleymediaworks.org or visit channel 994 on Spectrum Cable. It is also available at 101.9 FM. You can find past meetings on YouTube under the Chippewa Valley Media Works channel. We have a, a short but productive agenda, so we'll get started. Um, first item of business is the consent agenda. Does council have any questions in regards to the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, on a motion by Council Member Berge and seconded by Council Member Lohr, the consent agenda is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christopherson? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Wells? Aye. And the consent agenda has passed. Um, we have uh, no proclamations today. We do have uh, one item, or I'm sorry, two items on our business agenda. And uh, we'll move to agenda item number 12, which is a resolution approving the final condominium plat for Westridge Village Townhome Condominium Second Edition along Stonewood Drive as shown on planning file P4-19. Good afternoon, Mr. Allen. Good afternoon, Council President Weld and members of the council. Ah, thank you. Something happened, there we go. Uh, number three on this map, again, doesn't relate to the uh, council agenda, but relates to the planning commission agenda. We heard this item last week and is uh, recommending approval uh, unanimously. Uh, northwest part of Eau Claire, uh, just off of uh, 312 uh, near Mill Run subdivision. Uh, the property is just over 1.23 acres. Uh, again, this is a request for approval of final condo plat for what's called Westridge Village Townhome Condominium Second Edition. Uh, all the, lot, the lots all meet the R3P zoning district standards 
and this uh, plat will allow the developer to finish the final phase of the development. Uh, there was there were some delays uh, related to the initial approval with the development uh, back in 2016. There's a uh, three-year window with which to move forward. Uh, the applicant essentially is uh, having to just reset that through this process. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Allen and Council? I don't see any. All right, thank you. Thank you. So on a motion by Council Member Christofferson and seconded by Council Member Klinkhammer, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Emmanuel? Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. And that item passes. Uh, agenda item number 13. Uh, Sky Park Industrial Center, uh, the resolution regarding the abolishment of the Sky Park Protective Covenants for the Sky Park Industrial Center as shown on planning file Z1648-19. Does council have any additional questions for Mr. Allen? I don't see any. So on a motion by Council Member Gregert and seconded by Council Member Beaton, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Well? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. And that item passes. Uh, we have two ordinances for action. Uh, agenda item number 14, an ordinance amending the zoning code of the City of Eau Claire by amending the general de development plan regarding restrictive covenants for the Sky Park Industrial Center as shown on planning file Z164819. Again, does council have any questions or in need of any additional information from Mr. Allen? I don't see any. On a motion by Council Member Anderson and seconded by Council Member Berge, this item is moved. Any discussion? Quiet group. Um, seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Christofferson? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Well? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. And that item passes. Uh, second ordinance for action is agenda item number 15, an ordinance in accordance with section 66.0217, Wisconsin statutes and annexing to the city of Eau Claire and particularly to the 15th assessment ward, second automatic district being a part of the northeast quarter of the southwest quarter and in the northwest quarter of the southwest quarter of section 26. 79 West, Town of Washington, Eau Claire County, as shown in planning drawing number 19-2A. This does require two-thirds of the vote of the elected members of the governing body, therefore eight affirmative votes of the 11 elected council members are required for adoption. Again, Mr. Allen. Thank you again, Council President Weld and members of the council. Uh, this is uh, on this map, it's shown as uh, item number two here, southeast part of the city of Eau Claire, just uh, adjacent to south side of Otter Creek at the west uh, western terminus of Quail Ridge Road. Let's see here. Uh, the applicant uh, is David G. Lund. Uh, he owns um, these three parcels that are currently in the town of Washington as well as this one parcel that is currently in the city of Eau Claire. He is uh, moving forward with uh, building his uh, single family home on this vacant property and is requesting this annexation in order to bring all properties into the city of Eau Claire city limits. And again, adjacent to where he's, per where he's building his uh, single family home. This also was heard by the plan commission last week. Uh, they are recommending approval for you this afternoon. This shows a little bit more specifically the yellow highlight 
shows the areas that are currently in the town of Washington, so outside of the city limits. Again, you can see it's a little bit hard to see, perhaps, the vacant lot in question for the uh, single-family home construction, and again, the balance of the property, which does have some uh, City of Eau Claire access. That was a question that did come up at Plan Commission last week was uh, access, since these are three separate lots currently, uh, rather than just having access through the current City of Eau Claire uh, property that's being built upon, there are some additional access points off of uh, Harless Road here to the south and west. So with that, uh, stand for any questions as well. Does Council have any questions for Mr. Allen in regards to the annexation? I don't see any. Oh, Thank you. Council Member Christopherson. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Allen, during the Planning Commission meeting, the uh, landowner made some statements about development. Um, was he planning to divide or develop any of the property that he's asking to? Uh, no, good question. Uh, in speaking with uh, the applicant more specifically to that, uh, no, he is uh, simply looking to build his uh, single family home uh, on his current vacant lot. And I believe in his words, he was saying he looking to simply make the rest of this his large backyard, as it were. Uh, so I don't have uh, his site plan, but the house it would be situated essentially at an angle, kind of running southwest to northeast. So it would function much like a large backyard. And in part of this too, he is, uh, uh, depends on the final layout of the house. He may be straddling the line at one point and would be looking at, um, you needed to do a parcel combination of those two and through that, again, would have to have this property at the very least in the city limits. But at this point, again, he's building it only on this lot and would like to uh, just bring the whole property into the city, but no future plans for any kind of development. And in fact, it may be difficult to do so due to uh, kind of floodplain area in that. It Any other questions? I don't see any. Right, thank, thank you. you. On a motion by Councilmember Law and seconded by Councilmember Christofferson, this item is moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Gregert? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Lohr? Aye. Weld? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Berge? Aye. Christofferson? Aye. And that item passes with eight affirmative votes. Uh, there are no ordinances for introduction this evening, so it moves us to announcements. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Council President. Well, well, a year goes quickly. This was your last meeting in this room. Um, staff has been working very hard this last two weeks to move from Prairie Lane to the refurbished City Hall, and that should be completed by the end of the week. Um, so your next council meetings on September 9th and September 10th will be at City Hall. We will try to remind you of that. We will put signs here for anyone that, uh, that comes here accidentally. Um, but uh, just know that I, th I hope I speak for all of us that we're grateful for the hospitality that the county has provided to allowing us to use this room. And we're working on some appropriate um, uh, thank you expressions, both from the staff level, the executive level, and uh, we'll have something on your next agenda for a legislative thank you as well. So um, we will see you in two weeks at the refurbished City Hall City Council Chambers. Thank you, uh, City Manager Peters. Yeah, again, I would like to echo uh, again a big thank you to the to the county, and then also really anxious and excited to get back to to City Hall again and, and be back in our our council chambers. So look forward to seeing all of you in a couple of weeks. And if there are no further objections, does council have any announcements? With no other objections, we are adjourned. Thank you. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between Newsworks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write 
Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.